Um, thank you all for um, coming. I, know, I feel a bit abashed after the last couple of acts. They were both really good. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Nightmare, right? Now I've got to go. Um, I was like, shit, they're fucking fantastic. Bugger. Um, so, right, I'm going to be reading, I'm going to read five things tonight. Um, so that's a manageable number. Um, some of them have parts, but don't worry. The parts are short. Um, I'm going to start with a couple of new ones, which um, I've never performed them before. I haven't even fully memorized them yet. So bear with me on the first couple. Um, what the and then I'll do a couple of ones that are, that are slightly older. Um, what the two new ones have in common is that they're kind of what I, they're about what I've been thinking about recently, which is mainly the past um, and specifically the late nineteen nineties and early two thousands, um, which is kind of when I was like growing up, coming out, all that kind of stuff. And one interesting thing that was kind of happening during that period was personal websites, mm -hmm. like. It occurred to me this was like a really kind of specific like time limited form. Like this was an important cultural form for like ten, maybe fifteen years tops. That like there were these websites. People made these websites and they put really personal stuff on them. And you went and you read them and you read the whole website. You read the whole thing. And that was like how that was a kind of a form of communication and also like an important kind of cultural kind of folk art kind of form. Um, and no one really does this anymore because now we have social media, right? So it's sort of this um, dead archaic moribund form. But it was very alive. And one set of people I think it was very alive for in kind of the late 90s, early 2000s was trans women. Because um, this was kind of like, this was really just the kind of start of the kind of trans woman community or communities that you kind of see more of now. And I think a lot of us were like very isolated, like even more isolated than we are now. I have a poem about like how when I came out, it wasn't just that I didn't know any other trans women. I didn't know anyone who knew any trans women. I wasn't like two steps from trans women. There was no one who was like, oh, I have a friend. Uh, that didn't happen at all. Um, and so, and uh, yeah, so even more isolated than now, and also kind of under this like cloud of opprobrium. Like, I think, I remember at the time, like if you were feeling really like kind of an advocate of liber liberationist kind of trans feminism, people would be like, well, it's just that we have a birth defect. <laughs> like leaving aside the ableism of it. Like that's the idea that like, you know, if you felt really proud of yourself, you might claim that you basically just have a problem rather than being like a totally terrible kind of person. So these websites, when they started happening in kind of sort of the mid nineties or something, they were like really important to a lot of people. Um, there was transsexual.org, which was run by Jennifer Diane Wrights. Um, that was home of her life story, which she titled Entombed, and also of the Kojiati, which was a kind of online questionnaire that you could do to find out if you were really a transsexual. Um, I think a question like that only really needs one question, which is, are you doing an online questionnaire to find out if you're <laughs> <laughs> But it didn't have like 60 questions. Um, there was TS Roadmap, run by the immortal Andrea James. No, I actually think she really is immortal because she looks just the same now as she did in 1997. Nothing has changed. She will live forever. Um, and there was Lynn Conway's TS Successes, which is, um, was kind of, I guess, kind of the nicest or the best or like the most moving of them. Like Lynn Conway is actually this like super important programmer who's like one of the major designers of like how computers are or something and like changed the world with code. But also she changed my world by putting up this website in which there were a whole lot of like pictures of like actual real life trans women with like their names and brief bios and sometimes links to their websites or whatever, who were like living actual real lives and being alive and not, you know, not like actually human. It was kind of like the real life trans adult of like 2001. I guess, was TS successes. Um, and I mean, it was weird in some ways, but also it was kind of a really good, powerful thing, I think, for a lot of people. And recently, for various reasons, I ended up searching for it and thinking I could find it. And it's preserved on the University of Michigan servers. And seeing it again, it really actually took me by surprise. It gave me like just this really intense, overwhelming nostalgia, which lasted for like a week and which I'm actually still kind of reeling from. Because it belongs so, although I was like so heavily invested at one point in, at one point in my life, it belongs now so completely to another world. Like everything about like being trans has like changed so much in the last like 10, 15 years or whatever. And so it's kind of weird. It's weird. Like I'm not that old. I'm like 33. And it's weird to feel like a survivor <laughs> of a totally lost civilization. Right? <laughs> um, so I wrote a lament for it. Um, the lament is called Ubisunt which is what the Romans called the genre. Ubisunt means, where are they? And it's kind of the Latin lament for, for your lost comrades is an Ubisunt. That's the name of the genre. So this is an Ubisunt, and it has a dedication. www.lynnconway.com forward slash TS successes. 
all these pictures. I guess I dreamt of being on here with them. I sharply remember being jealous of the pretty ones, distancing myself from the ugly ones, and feeling really fucked up about whether I counted as an early transitioner. It never occurred to me to write to any of them. All of these old pictures are so uncool, and I miss how terrible it was and how much hairspray they all used. I mean, I used it too. My mother always complained. It was like we were straight, just really weird. What happened to them? All their websites are broken. The links are down. Facebook has swept them away. Their pixelated GIFs and multicolored fonts. Who cares about their journeys? The age they got SRS. How daring it was for them to put their faces on the web. Where did these women go? And who remembers them? And is there any way that we could still be friends? Um. Okay, and then the second one, which also belongs, I guess, to a similar time period, a little bit later. It's kind of about, like, I guess, I whatever, I'd left university, I was kind of trying to make my way in the world and like, you know, everyone feels like totally confused and like, what the fuck am I going to do with my life when they're like, you know, 21 or something. Um, but I think also there was like this particular thing for me around like the trans stuff, that like, it, because it was so different then, like I didn't have the word cis, that wasn't a word that really existed in the wider world till like 2007 or something with Julia Serrano. And so what I, the, word I, and the word I had was woman, I didn't have any differentiation to make there. And so I was like, great, okay, so if I'm going to be a woman, then I have to not be trans. This was, you know, that whole idea, woman of trans experience, right? Um, and what goes with that is you have to try and be stealth, because if you're telling people you're trans, you're telling people you're not a woman. So I was like, right, what I have to do is I have to be stealth and get a job. Um, and so I got a job, and I got a job in the wine trade, um, partly because I was an alcoholic, <laughs> but also partly because I was like, maybe this isn't too, like, cutthroat, and maybe I can, like, make my way in this. Um, and also, um, also I was slightly um, inspired. I just realized I need a prop. Um, there was a bag. Do you know, can anyone see my rucksack? Rucksack? It was... What it's kind of red. It's your reddish backpack. Yeah, um, reddish with a colour flag. Oh, I, flag. I think it was good. Um, oh. Sorry, it's a rucksack. <laughs> That's never going to figure this out. Read by uh, this lady, Jancis Robinson, who is like a big... She's in the wine world. Um, she's not, she's actually a cis lady, but I kind of figured she like, looked like a trans lady. So I was like, I don't know if she can make a baby, I can. Um, yeah, Jancis. I love Jancis. She's still an inspiration to me. Um, so I went into the wine trade. I was this total bundle of like mess and like emotional hurt and defensiveness and horribly misguided ideas. And I ended up trying to sell wine to people over the phone. Um, so much for not very cutthroat. And it was a disaster, of course. And that, but now, a decade or so later, I can kind of, I can kind of see the humour in it. I can finally joke about it a bit. So I wrote a poem. It's in fifteen little vignettes, but they're very short. It's called "How to Be Stealth Whilst Holding Down a Job in Telemarketing." Um... <laughs> Interview clothes. It is a journey there first time. Three trains, then a walk. I'm wearing a trouser suit and the pointy scarlet heels that pinch my toes with bows on the front. I cross the road towards a yellow metal building and try to ignore my hangover. I'm 23 and I feel like such an adult. Phone call. You've only got your voice. Hello, I'm from your club for wine. I'm calling with some offers just too good to go into our brochures. I emphasize Catherine. He says, young man. I don't react. It's fine. This is my task. To keep them on the phone until they buy to make me stop. Don't sound upset. My boss says sales is all about who cracks. Sometimes they get it right. Fag break. Fag is cigarette in England. <laughs> Fag break. <laughs> um, Alyssa offers me Reiki. She says it's her 
passion. James is scheming to make a fortune. His hair is shiny and neat. I talk about poetry. How did we all get involved in this? Bathroom. It's halfway through a call, I think. Oh, fuck! I don't know where it is! It came this morning, as I left. It says I'm legally a girl, at last. I read it on the train, and cried. And then I read it here in the loo, and cried again, and wiped my face, and washed my hands. I must have left it by the sink. And now they'll read it, and they'll know. I almost faint. But then instead, I sell a case of Sauvignon, and walk. Don't run! Don't run! And there it is. It looks untouched. Wine tasting. There's always a bottle or two to try. We have to know the product. We discuss it sagely, in depth, starting at 10 a.m. each day. There's a lot to learn. I could become a buyer if I pass the exams. I could become the next Genesis Robinson. Coming into work with new breasts. I wear a high neck top and hope that hides the change. It's stripy and pretty loose. I hate how it looks, but I think nobody notices my breasts. Of course, I'm wrong. Targets. I meet the targets every time. You have to be ruthless. The people you call are resources, numbers. Of course, I want them to like their wine. Whatever, wine is great. And once you're done, you get to leave. These are and aren't relationships. What would they think of me? Perhaps they wouldn't care. Just make the sale and go to the pub. Boy who likes me, Nick. I mean, he's pathetic. He's always trying to be nice to me. He always agrees with things I say. He sits by me and tells me jokes. He's nerdy, beardy, round and short. We talk about Riesling. And also sometimes Chenin Blanc. We're sort of friends. Later, when everything's gone wrong, I'll start screaming at him that everybody can see that I'm a transsexual and now I have to die. And he will say, it doesn't matter that I am a beautiful woman or something fucking dumb like that. Poems. At home, I write about how I can't imagine or inhabit my body. It's winter. All I am is attempts to predict and meet your expectations. My gender is, what do you think you're seeing today? In my poems, I live in a desert and there's nobody there but me. My flatmate leaves and I don't care. I go to gay clubs and pretend I'm someone's straight best friend. I throw a lot of dinner parties. I'm always drunk. The employee discount is my favorite thing about this job. Boy, I like. He's stocky and blonde and grins like he knows everything. And he's great at selling. Always slightly ahead in the stats. He has an open relationship. So I pursue them both. At their flat, I try to play footsie with his wife. When she goes to bed, I sit up and drink with him. He tells me he used to be a chef and demonstrates the proper way to poach an egg. <laughs> Another night like this, when I'm not expecting it at all, he is the one who tells me they all know I'm trans. Or like, there's not unanimous accord on it, but there's been talk and he, of course, is sure. He says he knew the second that we met. Although I cry, Although I implore him desperately, he can't explain this insight of which he is so proud. 
On Monday, I'll still have to meet his gaze and say hello. I'll have to meet everyone's gaze and pick up the fucking phone. Monday. I meet everyone's gaze and pick up the fucking phone. I don't control my thoughts, but I control my face. It's a good day if what you're asking me about is how much shitty wine I force people to buy. Computer. It has its programs. Dialer. Targets. Offers list. It's never tired. Never even gets turned off. Every morning, it's there. It says, call them, call them, ask them, do they need some wine? Then lie the way I prompt you to until they buy or else hang up. It is my frenemy. I cover it <laughs> with drawings I do of skulls or little cartoons of people who hate their lives. <laughs> I dance around the office and offer a single page of Blake to everyone. Songs of experience. I know they know, but apart from Nick, who I finally kiss, I never mention it to anyone at all. Car park. They have this model wine press in the parking lot, full size. I'm inside, calling my mother on the phone and saying, this can't go on. I do not tell her that they figured out I'm trans or that Ben left. I miss him so. I cry to Ryan Adams songs. I do not say, my understanding of myself is a dead end. I can't be normal. It doesn't work. Instead, I say, perhaps this isn't the right career for me. Perhaps I'm not cut out for office work. Sorry. Inside the tun, against the cheap oak planks, peering through the gap, getting ready to turn and run. Resignation. I'm never going to feel again. I almost want to give up wine. All I did was lose and lose. Um. Um. So yeah, that was, that was one about a job. Um, jobs are terrible. You know what else is terrible? Relationships. Um, <laughs> so here's one about a relationship, because we're clearly on terrible things tonight. Um, this is about an ex of mine. Her name is Amy, um, and it is called Fucking Amy! <laughs> um, it's in three parts. The first one is called Fuck! <laughs> Fuck you, Amy! You're a pain in the arse! Why do we have to sleep on the couch? Why don't you let me touch you more? What does it take to make you smile? Listen, shut up. You are pretty. I actually do think you're beautiful. Bony, bodo, bo bony body, narrow arms, tile and vagina. I know it's shallow, but I like to put my fingers in it. <laughs> Listen, I know we're breaking up. I know we are never getting back together. I know you are a fucking nutcase, but I'm still in love with you, all right? <laughs> Second one is called <laughs> You! <laughs> Never fuck another trans woman. They are all crazy bitches. They bite, scratch, hide, hate things just like I do. Oh my god. Why are we all so hurt, so angry? I wish I could have found a way to heal either one of us. I wish you could have forgiven me for being one of us. I wish my love meant healing too. Whatever. Fuck you, Amy. I had enough. You wanted me to go away? We both got what we wanted from this. I hope you're happy with how it went. And the third one is... Amy! <laughs> Amy, it was a long time ago now. I haven't talked to you in years. You were too intense, I can't forget. But I don't know what the hell it was. You remember in my mum's house that time? That one time. We were staying there alone, and we got naked by the fireplace. You let me touch your lovely cunt, and then came suddenly, and then cried. 
I'm sorry I'm not cis. I'm sorry you're not. Okay, fuck that. I'm not sorry at all. I don't know how it could have changed, but I wish it didn't have to be this way. We're getting there, that's three, that's three things, and the longest one is over. Entertain me a little longer, I um, it won't be long. Um, mm -hmm. Going back further in time, oh my god, it's all about the past. Why the fuck do I keep writing about the past? Isn't there anything I can say about now? Now is okay. Um, this one is a date, 1995. Um, it's called Lullaby. Um, I have a long-term plan to get a, um, a gay man's choir to sing this one. Um, <laughs> watch this space. Um, <laughs> This room is full of terrors. My father lies in the next room. What is it that I'm doing in here? Dressing like a girl. These are my mother's clothes on racks here. This is her low and soft lighting. What is it that I'm doing in here? Dressing like a girl. It is in my legs and fingers. It is in my stomach pit that I can't stop coming in here. Dressing like a girl. But my father's out there dying. He is yellow, flat and thin and his breaths are each unlikely, croaking like a frog. I know where every drawer is, where the tights and where the socks. I know where, um, where the knickers, where the dresses, hanging on the racks. This is not about her secrets, but I know them all the same. I know where her wedding dress is, she'll never wear again. Sometimes I get creative with these bits of her old life and invent these women I will never get to be. Like businesswoman, housewife, hostess at a ball. All of these old outfits she never wears at all. Most times I touch my penis and come wearing these clothes, then hate myself so badly, kneeling on the floor. This room is full of dreaming. It's full of hating everything. It's full of sex and full of grossness and full of not knowing. What my mother thinks, I don't know. What she'll do when he is gone. What she needs from me, I don't know. So I always get it wrong. I don't know what I'm doing in here. I don't know what it all means. My father's out there dying and I'm dressing like a girl. I don't have a lot of time here, or my aunts will soon return to keep watching for the dying he will soon perform. I don't have time to be creative, and I don't know what I want. I'm just looking in the mirror, staring like a fool. I put on a pair of knickers, I pull out a random bra. It's not sexy, it's not hopeful. I do it anyway. I go into the doorway. I look towards the bed. I give a little wave, a greeting to my dad. I whisper something stupid. Hi, I say. I'm here. I stand for 30 seconds, not even full of fear. Just something, I don't know. I can't say what it is. I don't know what I'm doing, standing in the door. I mean, he's unconscious. In a day or two, he'll die. He'll never know I stood here, waved him goodbye. So that was all pretty, ha pretty heavy, but I'm going to end on a slightly lighter note. Um, it's getting a bit warmer, right? Getting a little bit warmer. Um, and so I, I have a little poem for when it's getting a bit warmer. Um, it occurs to me it's a bit of an English poem. Because like here, the weather is actually kind of reliable. Like if it's cold, it's going to stay fucking cold. If it's warm, it's going to stay warm. But in England, if there's sunshine, you better get out into it because in 10 minutes it'll be gone. Literally, you get one sunny day in Manchester in England, like everyone leaves the offices and starts Sunday. <laughs> everyone just like runs into the streets and gets naked. Like, why? Um, 
So yeah, this is kind of this is kind of a warm weather poem, but it's an English warm weather poem. But maybe 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 it'll work here as well. It has been a bit cold the last couple of days. So this is a prayer to the sun. <laughs> now listen, sun. Don't you go away behind that stupid cloud. Shine on me, and I will make a gift to you of half my beer and pour it out on the ground. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs>